what up nerds in this video i want to cover some of the life cycle methods that you will be encountering when using godot this information will remain relevant for both versions 3.x and 4.0 as it is a part of the foundation and how godot works now a life cycle method is going to be a method that the engine will call for you during an object's lifetime this video will be mostly focusing on the node object as that will be what you will be interacting with the most in this project here, I have a scene set up that has a script on the root node. Inside of this script are the lifecycle methods that you will be encountering. Starting out, we have the init function. The init function is going to be your constructor for the object. It is important to note that if you are trying to create the object by using the dot new method, so node dot new, if you're trying to create the object this way, your init method can have parameters. However, if you are trying to instance a scene and inside of that scene, one of the nodes has a script that has an init function that has parameters, it will not work. So to demonstrate this, I have set up a script, all right? Inside of the script, in my init function, I have a parameter, and I'm pretty much just going to print the parameter. All right. So going back to the lifecycle script, if we see here, I am loading that script. I am creating a new object, and I'm passing in that parameter. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. No problem. Now. If we open the params.scene file, you can see that I have the script on the root node of a scene. All right, so now we're going to look at what happens when we instance it. I'm going to go ahead and instance that, change this to the scene version. Go ahead and create a quick variable. You don't want to use these kinds of names for your variables, but here we go. So we're going to go ahead and add it. And it doesn't crash, but we do get this error down here. All right, and then if we look at the remote tree, it seemingly worked, right? Well, no, because if we click on the node 2D here, at the bottom, you can see we don't have a script. So if I were to try and call something on, on this and the say hello is, right here so we'd be expecting it to print something now we get a crash because the script was never properly created thus it could never be set on that node so the key thing to remember is if you are instancing you cannot have parameters if you're just doing the dot new object creation you can have parameters now moving on, the inner tree function will be called in a top to bottom order when the node enters the tree. It will be called every time the node enters the tree. All right, and then ready is kind of the same way, only it happens the first time it enters the tree and it gets called from a bottom to top order except it starts from the top of your child list. So what do I mean by that? In the life cycle scene, you can see that I have one child and I have a grandchild. So if we go into their script, we're gonna go ahead and uncomment this out and uncomment this out. So the child script has inner tree overridden and I have ready overridden as well. All right, so what we should see is the life cycle uh, inner tree gets called, the first child inner tree gets called, then the grandchild inner tree gets called, and then going back upwards should be the ready call. And all I'm doing is printing out the name of the node. All right, and it's the same thing here. So when we run this, and then we look into our output log, Life cycles enter the tree, first child enter the tree, grandchild enter the tree, 
grandchild is ready, first child is ready, life cycle is ready. So everything works as expected. Now, this is where it can get a little dicey. If we add more nodes, and let's just add another one. Let's go second child, and then second grandchild, and then add the child script to them. So it'll just print their names at the given lifecycle method. When we run this, we have everything enters the tree as expected because it works in a top to bottom order. Now, if we look at the ready, we have the grandchild is ready and then the first child is ready. So these two are ready. And then we have the second grandchild is ready and then the second child is ready. So then these two are ready and then the life cycle is ready. So ready gets called in a bottom to top order, but starting from your first child. All right. The general flow is enter tree down, ready up. Now, if we go ahead and close that script out, close the script out. And I also want to mention that ready only gets called the first time that the node enters the tree. You can uh, tell Godot to call it again with, a, with the method call of request ready, but that's not very common. All right, so ready is probably going to be the one you use the most because it is where your scene tree operations will be safest. So if you need to get any children, you can do that inside of ready because ready will be called when all of your children are in the scene tree and ready to be operated on. Now, over here, we have physics process and process. Physics process is called every single physics frame, and process is called every single frame. Now, the physics frame can be configured in the project settings, and process is going to be called as often as possible. Now, physics process is going to be called before process. However, it will only be called if it meets the criteria that you set in the project settings. So, if physics process is set to be called 60 times uh, a second and process is going to be able to be ran 120 times a second there will be times where physics process is not executed but process is all right so if we go into the process scene what i have here is pretty much the same thing all right we have process uh, going to be printed out for the order that it's going to be. And this will be in top to bottom order. All right. So when I run this, get that overflow, go up to the very top, process is processing, first child, grandchild, and then second child. All right. Now, let's do this. Go ahead and do physics process, and then Let's just copy that real quick. All right, so I'm going to start this and then run it, and we'll end it. Let's see if I did that too fast. Nope. All right, so process is physics processing, physics processing, and then we get to processing because physics processing gets called first. All right. And then the last one to be aware of is exit tree. And this will be called every time the node exits the tree. All right. So just as a quick recap, init is going to be your constructor. It can have parameters if you do a dot new call. It cannot have parameters if you're trying to instance a scene that has the script attached to it. Enter tree gets called every time the node enters the tree. And it gets called in a top to bottom order. Ready? gets called only the first time the node enters the scene tree in a bottom to top, but top to bottom order. All right. It starts from the first child. And, and then if that node has any children, like so pretty much a sub scene, well, sub tree, 
the ready calls will be happening from the bottom to top. All right. Physics process happens every fr every physics frame and it gets called before process. Process gets called every single frame and exit tree gets called every time the node exits the tree. Now, these are just the most common ones that you will be dealing with. If you want to see some of the other uh, functions that you can be interacting with, well, you can pull up the search help and look for underscore notification. All right. And when we go here, this is actually what does all of the communication the, uh, and the notification. So inner tree, ready, physics process, process, and exit tree are all just wrappers around this more or less. So you can override this by doing funk notification and then it's what all right and now to figure out what it is that you want to actually listen out for we'll just go ahead and click on this and it'll take us up to some enumerations and then where is it nope some constants all right so we have post initialize and pre-delete now the reason there aren't that many is because we're in the object class. All right. So if we go to the node class, scroll down over here to the constants, here's a, here are all the notifications. So if you want to check when, let's say, uh, what's the other common one? It is pre-delete. Where is it was it in notification yeah so pre-delete so i'm just going to copy that and then we can do if what equals notification pre-delete what this is this will be called whenever the node gets deleted so called before the object is about to be deleted. So this could be seen as your destructor, all right? And that about covers everything. If you wanna know more, I would recommend just going through these constants and seeing what you can do with this notification method. And But this is typically for a bit more advanced use cases. These functions right here will be what you typically interact with. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, see you, nerds.